Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me on a rather sunny roof terrace here in Spain. Flipping roasting today. Dog's down on the floor out of shot, panting away. It's too hot for him, but there is shade here as well, but he likes to sit in the sun. Apologies if you hear any road noise. It's a lovely spot here, but there is a busy road going past there. Hopefully it won't affect the video too much. Uh, you'll see, I've got a rope in my hand. Probably a video I should have done yonkies ago, um, but it's, it's hopefully only going to be a short one. It's one I've had a lot of requests on, and it's, it's just very simply how to coil a rope. So I'm going to give us two and a half methods for doing that. A couple of pros and cons to both, uh, just in the logistics sense, not a safety sense or anything. Why does it matter how we do it? Well, we want to do it in a way that minimizes twists and tangles in the rope, don't we? And something that's carryable, so we'll have a little look, a quick look at how to make a sort of a rucksack out of the rope as well to make it easy to scramble down off the top of Tramadical, wherever you might be. First thing then, with this rope, which is an 80, so there will be a bit of either cutting or fast forwarding, so you don't want to see me coiling 80 meters of rope. I found the middle of it, it's marked on this one. If it isn't marked on your rope, get both the ends of the rope together and just push it all through until you come to the middle. Anytime you're doing this and running a rope through your hand, it's also a chance to find um, you know, any damage. So look out when you're doing it, feel for any kinks, cuts, abrasion, anything like that, and pause if you feel anything and make a bit of a judgment. So always use these opportunities to do that kind of thing. But I've got the middle, uh, I'm gonna double uh, strand coil first. So I'm gonna put it over my head, and I'm pulling my arms, so they're not quite straight. There's a bit of bend left in them. And this is just to make it neat and tidy. Does neat and tidy matter? Well, it's nice to look at your stored rope, isn't it, in the, in the shelf when it's neat and tidy. But also, when you have got a rucksack made out of it, you don't want long dangly bits to get caught on rocks and roots and things when you're scrambling down and stuff. So uh, is it the end of the world? No, but it does make life a bit easier, I think. So we may as well do it nice and neat. It's all about the thumbs. What I'm gonna do, the bit dangling down there, I'm gonna catch it in my thumb and pull it over my head. Pull it down so it's nice and neat and try and get all these loops similar lengths like I say. Dangly bit on this side, it's gonna be this thumb. That's all you're doing. It's all about the thumbs, alternating sides. It requires a bit of brain power when you first do it. You've never done it before, but after a while it just becomes second nature. You do it with your eyes closed, talking to your mate. Uh, next thing you know, the rope's coiled. It can be a bit pumpy sometimes, especially on this 80. Uh, so I'll keep going for a little bit longer in shot. And then what will happen is occasionally you'll get some uh, little twists and tangles. So just throw them out. And at that point, I've got quite a lot of coils. Uh, so they're sat on my shoulders quite nicely, but they are filling my hands up. So all I'll do there is just get that nice and neat let go, keep them up there, and just reset. So I'll throw another coil over my head, try and match up the lengths to what they were before, and then just repeat, all about the thumbs again, and keep going till you got to the end, and I'll cut to that point in just a second. Right, so I've coiled all this rope up, sat on my shoulders nicely. Uh, my hands are filthy because this rope is so dusty from the climbing here. At this point, I've got tail still on the floor, about two arm spans worth, okay? What I'm gonna do now is the bit that you can mess up if you're not concentrating. So when you lift it off your shoulders, keep them all together. Don't mess it up now because they're nice and neat so far. Drape them over a hand, match up the length so they're roughly about the same. Get your two strands that are dangling down. And you're gonna wrap it around the whole rope near the top and pull it quite tight each time to keep it nice and neat again. And work a few wraps higher up. So moving upwards around your hand. That just keeps it neat and together stops it falling apart. Once you uh, have done a few wraps, maybe three or four wraps on that, I get a bite of those two strands and push them through the top there. Like so, pull them through, and then lift that little loop over the whole lot. Pull that tail up through there. That locks it off quite nicely. We're then gonna make our little rucksack out of it. Two strands over your shoulders. Get it sat on your back so it's comfy. Get those two strands, try and get them over the top of the rope if you can. Keeps it against your back, stops pulling you off balance and stuff. And then I tie, any old knot will do really, won't it? By tie a reef knot just for being neat and tidy and it won't come undone. Jobs are good. And if they're too long, I don't like stuff kind of below knees, so that's kind of borderline. You just tie an extra knot in it just to neaten things up. Anything will do there just to stop it again getting caught on stuff. So you've coiled it, you've checked it, you've made a nice little rucksack out of it, down you go, off to your next route. Method number two, I shall show you in a second. I've got to uncoil this rope onto the floor first uh, and then you'll join me in a sec. This time, I'm just using a single strand of the rope. There's advantages to this uh, and the main one is that once you uh, unwrap your coils, throw them on the floor, 
with the double coil of the first method, the two strands, find that you get some twists and tangles. Not the end of the world, because you just you take them out, it doesn't take you long, but I find the single strand version gets a little less twisted and tangled, so it's a little bit quicker to use when you're ready to climb. It is, however, a little bit slower at this point, because you're doing it all on the single strand, so it sort of takes twice the time. Again, it's super quick once you've got used to it, though. It is not really any different other than you start from one end, right? Same sort of length again, thumbs again, so no different, it's just on the one strand, okay? Keeping the same length, do exactly what you did before. Uh, some people don't like this method, because one, it takes a bit longer, but the other reason is people don't like it, because you can't make a, a rucksack out of it, but actually you can, it's not quite as comfy, I'll give you that, but it does work nonetheless, so I'll fast forward this bit or cut, and you'll join me ready to do that bit. Okay, so I'm back at the point now where I've coiled it over my head, take it off over the hands you'll see it's no different from before uh, except you've got the single strand so give that some wraps around trying to keep those as uh, even as possible it's a little bit messy but it's hard not to be messy on a flipping 80 give that your wraps maybe about four wraps on this one keep them neat again once you've got those push the loop through again the bite of rope through the hole loop it over the top same as before pull that strand through to lock it off so you've only got one strand. You can leave another strand out, but personally, I just make the rucksack like this now. So I put it over my back again. This time, you still put one strand over the thing. You've got like a cross uh, bit of rope there. Pull it through. Just do yourself a couple of half hitches on that. Tend to do two, because uh, otherwise they seem to come undone if you only do one. Get one in there one in there. It is not quite as stable as the other method, uh, but it's perfectly comfortable for a quick scramble down somewhere. So I'm kind of a fan of that because it's just neater to get undone at the other end, really. I said I'd give you a, a half a bonus one, right? Uh, and that is what I've been doing all winter and will do for the rest of the winter. I always do it for sport climbing. Just use a rope bag. For trad climbing, uh, I tend to coil my ropes because I don't want to take an extra bag up with me. I tend to be multi-pitching and stuff anyway. But you could do this for single pitch trad as well. Rope bags are really good. Um, they're just a nice way of carrying the rope to and from the crag. They come with a little tarpaulin thing as well, which one, keeps your rope a bit cleaner out of the mud, the dust, whatever, depends where you are. Around here it's out of a bit of the dust. And there's a bit of a safety feature with them as well, really which sounds like a real simple thing, but it's so important. When you're trad climbing, you tend to both tie into the rope before you do your buddy checks and everything, so the leader's tied in. The second may as well tie in then, because you get to check it. If they don't tie in then, they tie in once the lead's already up. You've missed an opportunity to buddy check, so get that going then. But on uh, sports stuff, tend not to tie in, although you could do. But what I personally do is, on my DMM rope bag, it comes with this part, and you've got a green end, which will be the leader's end. You've got a blue end, which is sort of the dead end, if you like. And I tend to, personally, right, I just tie an overhand with a good tail. That way, if you're lowering your mate off and you come to the end of the rope, you can't go past that, which is a really good thing. Too many people have been lowered off the end of a rope, which is just a, a, an avoidable uh, accident, really, isn't it? So put that knot in. So some people prefer to do a barrel knot instead, which is a couple of wraps around there uh, and poke the end through. So like a stopper knot or a half a double fisherman's really, uh, pull that through. And it just gives you something that is, he says, the little thing's got in the way, there you go. It's a bit more solid and uh, just, it can't come undone that. The overhand, there is a chance of it coming undone, slim as it might be, but that is full on bulletproof. So that's a good thing to do. Once you've uh, got your rope then, you lay your tarpaulin out, you put all the rope onto there no coiling necessary, no uncoiling necessary. As I say, the other end, tie it into the green end so you can find the ends really quickly. Jobs are good. And so that's my two and a half methods for coiling a rope. There are other ways, of course. There are some people that coil the rope, for example, will instead of wrapping both bits together at the end, they'll just wrap it around the middle so it drapes over a rucksack uh, nicer. That's one way of doing it. See people doing that a lot uh, more in the Alps and stuff and you got to carry it a bit further. So I kind of like that one. The other one you'll see a lot is sort of mountaineer coils, which are like proper coils. Uh, that, that works really well. It's a nice way of carrying the rope again downsides you have to be very careful when you're uncoiling it not to get it into a complete bird's nest of rope so just be a bit careful you sort of take it off one strand by one strand rather than just dumping it and going because that will just lead to bad things so one strand at a time on that 
So I hope that's been useful. Do fire away with any questions. As always, happy to answer as best I can. Hope it's been a useful little video. Most people will probably know that already, but if you don't know, you don't know. As always, find us on Insta, Facebook, uh, click the like button, smash the subscribe button, find the buy me a coffee thing, the t-shirt thing, all the support. As always, massively appreciated. Thanks very much for watching as always. More videos coming up very soon. Bye.